Hi, I'm Advanced Fitness and Wellness Specialist, Kimberly Liu, and welcome to my personal freedom program, a complete guide to eliminate destructive patterns and unlock the ultimate you. Now, this week we're gonna be talking about the universal language of energy. Now, I've been working with energy a long time. It's not that woo-woo, uh, airy-fairy kind of thing where you're at the mountaintop and you're saying, um. Now, no offense if you do that. I've done that before. It's totally good, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I am talking about is our intuition. Now, I remember reading the book, uh, Be the Pack Leader from Caesar Milan. And he actually put the term, the universal language of energy, and it really put that last piece into the puzzle of what I've been teaching for over 20 years. And so he uses, um, he, you know, he, he trains animals, and I love his analogy. Like, if you go up to a dog and you're afraid, what happens? It's like, if, if, if that dog senses that you're afraid of him and you go to pet him, that dog's either likely to bite you, he will turn your back to you, or he will want to get away from you. However, if you go up to that same dog and you have a calm, assertive energy, you can usually go up to that dog and that dog will just hang out with you and he certainly more than likely won't bite you. But that being said, us humans, we are the only animals that I know of that we can actually smile at your face but really hate your guts. So what I want to do is teach you how to get in touch with that universal language of energy, your gut feeling, so that we can now start applying it to the program because a lot of times we're surrounding ourselves with this particular energy and it's draining that energy so that you don't have, you don't have it's not sustainable. So that being said, we're going to go through and I'm going to show you how to manage it so that you can learn how to harness it, redirect it, and put it into the life that you love. But first I want to talk about a story. Now I remember my daughter Summer and I, we were going hiking. Now my daughter doesn't like to work out, but there are these fairy trails and it was one way to get her to start moving her body, which was awesome. So we would go to each fairy trail, there's probably like 50 of them in our area. And this person, I don't know how it got there, but they built these fairy houses and they put them along the trails. And then these kids, they go up and they play with them and it's super fun. So my daughter would run to each one. There was like a shopping mall fairy house. And so she was talking to the fairy saying, come out, I want to play with you. And she would realize that the fairy wouldn't come out. So she'd run to the next fairy house and then she would sing to the fairy. She, she would say, please come out. And of course that wouldn't work. And then she would cry, please come out. It was, you know, it was super cute to watch her. But each house we started to go to, we, you know, it was, it was really fun to watch her, but, you know, and it was a way to get her to move her body and get her to, to keep going. So we were coming along the last fairy house of the trail. And she's like, Mommy, can I run over there and get it? And I said, Absolutely, baby. So she starts to run and she stops out of nowhere. Now, I didn't know what the heck was happening, but I could absolutely feel that something was wrong and she could too. So she just stopped and I said, what is it, baby? And she said, mommy, I don't know. And I said, well, be quiet, okay? Because we could both feel it. Something was, something was wrong. We couldn't see it, but we could feel it. So I slowly grabbed her hand and I just, you know, just in case I needed to pull her away from danger. And we just started looking around and I looked at the very last fairy house and there was a rattlesnake. And that rattlesnake was sending us a message. And he was saying through the universal language of energy, or better yet, telepathy, if you come any closer, I will kill you. And so we got that message loud and clear. We saw the snake. It was coiled up. It was ready to strike. And so we stopped. We backed away. And then we moved around and we decided to go the other way. <laughs> So that being said, that snake was sending us a universal language of energy. Please get out of my way because I am in this fight or flight. I'm going to kill you if you step any closer. So that being said, animals are very clear on the energy they send out. You know what you're getting. So like I said before, humans are the only animals that I know of that can smile at your face and hate your guts. But also humans carry a particular energy that, and they don't even know that it's happening. So a lot of times somebody might have a victim consciousness. And then so they walk into a, a room and they have this victim consciousness and then they wonder why 
people treat them like crap. Or you can come into the room with an aggressive energy and people will also respond to that energy. And so as humans, we carry beliefs or stories. And in the previous video, we talked about belief systems and how to unpack your beliefs. But also we have these stories that we carry around with us. And then we think that those stories are true. So I'm going to illustrate with a story. Now I remember when I was about two and a half, three years old, my parents, we all, my whole family, we went to Pizza Hut and we were having a really good time and I was off playing video games and doing my little thing and when I came back to the table, everybody was gone. And I soon, and I, I quickly realized like, oh my gosh, there's nobody here. And I became very afraid. And then the manager of the restaurant, they called the police officers, police officers came and they decided, okay, well, her parents aren't coming back. So let's see if we can find, see if she can get us home. And so I started to lead them and it took me at about maybe three, almost four hours to get myself home. However, at two and a half years old, I found my way home. Pretty miraculous, right? So the police officer and I, we, we found my house. I had been gone for seven hours. They knocked on the door. My parents opened up. They said, did you forget anything? And they were like, no. And I popped my head out and they were like, oh, I guess we did. And I created the belief that I was right then and there, I was unwanted and that the world was a scary place. So I brought that belief system with me since I was two years old and I carried that with me everywhere I went into relationships. And I created scenarios in my relationships that would reinforce that I was unwanted and that it was scary. So that being said, I remember, and I'm, I'm going to fast forward now, I'm going to tell you one more story just to get to the point across about belief systems and how we create this. And I have a client and she was, you know, she's married and she had the same kind of belief system as me about being a victim. And so she said to me, you know, I'm kind of angry that my husband isn't cleaning the house. He's not helping me clean the house. And I said to him, well, did you ask him? And she said, well, no, I didn't ask him. He should just be able to clean the house. And I said, well, you're kind of an asshole. And she goes, what? And I said, well, you're kind of setting your husband up to fail. I said, if you're not asking him to help you, how can he know that you need his help? I said, you know, you need to, you need to call your husband up and say, hey man, I've been an asshole. I've been making you wrong because you didn't clean the house and I just expected you to know that I wanted you to clean the house. And she actually, <laughs> she goes, what? And I said, yeah. I said, because what's happening is, is you're, cre you're reinforcing a belief that you're a victim. And so you're setting all these people up in your space to fail just so you can prove your belief system right. So she called her husband and she said, you know what? I've been a jerk. I just have to apologize to you because what I'm really doing is setting you up to fail. And really, honey, I was just wondering, could you help me clean the house? And that man rolled up his sleeves and he helped her clean the whole house. Probably that house had been cleaner than it had ever been in their entire marriage. So those are our belief systems. And unfortunately, we take ourselves wherever we go. And so we walk into a room, we walk into an environment, we basically hand people a script on how we want them to treat us. And then we get angry at them for treating us in this way. It's kind of like if you were super afraid and then you go up to the dog and he bites you and you make the dog wrong because you had the fearful energy. The dog is just reacting to your energy. So it is our job now to calm that energy down, but how do we do it? How do we do it if we don't even know it's there? First thing is you want to think of a time when you were a kid when something just is really disappointing. Like it could have been like you were at school. Like I remember I was talking to one of my clients and he had said, you know, when I was five years old, I had a helmet on and one of these school kids, they took my helmet off and they threw it and then they broke it and then they made fun of me and then they left. So he made that mean that I am unwanted and that the world was mean. And everywhere that he went, nobody wanted him around and people were mean to him. So that being said, we've got to go into that childhood and say, okay, that is, is that true? I mean, think about it, okay? Just, let's just take my seven-year-old daughter, Summer. So let's just say you and I, I'm saying, you know what? 
come with me. We're going to go to the Hollywood Bowl. I'm going to take you to the best concert ever. We're going to go in my car, so don't worry. Just meet me at my place, and you and I are going to sit back in the back seat of our car, and my seven-year-old daughter is going to drive us to the Hollywood Bowl. Now, how would you feel about that? Do you think that my seven-year-old daughter could drive us to the Hollywood Bowl and, and we could still be alive? She would kill us. And that being said, your three, four, five-year-old inner child is basically driving your life and slowly killing you. These, you know, when you're three or four or five, you develop these survival skills that at one time they served you, but now they're slowly, softly, or maybe not so softly, killing you. So now let's take away, what are we going to do about this? How are we going to change these beliefs? And then how are we going to manage our energy so we can calm down that inner child and get them in the back seat? Okay, so what is the takeaway here? We need to be able to change that energy. We need to be able to calm that inner child down so that they feel safe enough in order to get into the back seat of the car, have a coloring book and some crayons, and you're going to buckle them in so that she's not, he's not driving your life. So what is the solution? So every day in meditation, you want to wake up first thing in the morning and you ask that inner child, what do you need? What do you need in order to feel safe, in order to feel loved, in order to feel wanted? What is it that you need and how can I give that to you? And so you'll sit quietly and you'll think, okay, what do I need? And usually it's something super simple like, I want to play or I want to walk in nature or I want to sing or dance. Or better yet, when you were a kid, what did you love to do? What did you do all day long that you absolutely could just do all day long? Now, I remember I used to love to be in nature and I would go in and I would, there was, a, there was avocado trees and I would go sit under the avocado trees. It was just a cool breeze and there was a golf course there. And I remember I just loved to be alone in nature when I was a kid because I had nine kids in my family. It was the only piece that I ever got. <laughs> or I remember when I was a kid, I used to love um, to make things and then I would go door to door and sell them. And I realized that that is something that I continue to do to this day. I also remember that I was always a helper. I loved helping people, listening to people. And ironically, it's what I do for a living. So it's kind of like what, whatever I was doing when I was free as a kid and creating is what I'm doing for a living right now. And that being said, when we're kids, when we allow that inner child to shine, it's like we're the most exposed and open, but also the most creative. It's when we're feeling the most alive. And a lot of us, we shut that down because people would take advantage of that. You know, some people would take advantage of us when we were a child. And that being said, now you are going to learn how to be the parent or the mentor that you wished you had when you were a kid. So that being said, we want to now become the kind of parents that we wished we had or the kind of mentor that we wished we had. And so what I want you to do right now is I want you to sit quietly and just focus on your heart. And I want you to ask that child, like, what do you need in order to feel free, in order to feel happy now? Usually the answer is something very simple. It's usually something I want to go out, like I want to go out in nature. I want to play. I want to sing. I want to write. I want to express myself. So again, sit quietly and ask yourself, what is it that is seeking to emerge through me as this child right now? and write it down. So now that you're starting to listen to that inner child, that inner child will begin to calm down. For so long, we've been ignoring that part of ourselves. And what happens is, is when you start to stifle, when you start to push that part of you down, it will literally come out in neuroses. Now I remember, you know, what is neuroses? I'll, I'll explain it to you. I remember Caesar Milan in his book, he says, what happens when you don't exercise your dog? or when you don't give him structure, or when you don't give him a purpose. What happens is he starts to develop this kinetic energy and what he'll do is he'll start to 
tear up your shoes. He'll bite. He'll bark out, you know, bark out at people. He'll try to attack dogs. This dog is now developing a neurotic behavior or maybe even some addictions. So humans are no different. What happens is, is when you're not, you know, allowing yourself to express, when you're not moving your body as far as exercise, when you're not creating a solid structure and we don't have a purpose, what happens is you start to develop neurotic behaviors. We'll either reach for alcohol or we'll reach for food or sex or drugs or whatever it is to take that energy and so we don't feel the pain. So that being said, this is the first step into you know to to really working with that neurotic behavior. We start to listen to that inner child that is screaming and creating that behavior and we're starting to listen to him so then that child starts to calm down. And basically, you know, have you ever um, ever felt really heard by somebody and then you know you've been frantic but somebody really listens to you and when they really listen to you it's like you you caught your body calms down well now you're gonna start to learn how to really listen to your body to that inner child so that now that child starts to calm down you can finally take that child out of the driver's seat Put him in the back seat. First, you gotta pay attention to him, really nurture him, give him the attention he needs, and then you're gonna put him in the back seat, maybe give him a coloring book and some crowns, and buckle him in so you can now take control and drive your own life. So now that we have that child in the back seat buckled and ready and safe, now it's time to come up with some new beliefs. Now for me, my beliefs were I am unwanted, I am unlovable, and the world is super scary. Now you remember my stand-up story, remember? I was drowning in two feet of water. All I needed to do was just put my feet down. I had to create some new beliefs that told me that the world was a safe place. So my new beliefs now are I am so lovable. And honestly, I, am, I totally believe that. Everywhere I go, I get hugs. People tell me how wonderful I am. And the world is super safe. And I've created an environment where I have a safe environment. And the people around me, again, they show me that they're there. They're there to protect me. Not that I even need protecting. But if I did, I'd know. I'd just call somebody up and they have my back. And everywhere I go, my world shows me my new beliefs on a daily basis but it took first going into that child starting to nurture him starting to be the kind of parent that I wished I had and then I started to give myself the kind of time and nurturing that I needed in order to to develop a you know to feel safe and secure part of that was through exercise part of that was creating a structure and part of that was creating a purpose, which we're going to go over in some f future videos. So stay tuned. It's coming. But that being said, that first part was just really getting in touch with my inner child, letting him know that he's okay, she's okay. And then also now putting him in the back seat, coming up with new beliefs. I am so wanted. I am so lovable. And my world is beautiful. Now you do yours. Wake up. In the morning, ask your child what it needs, then reinforce the new beliefs, and then you start your day. So that is my definition of the universal language of energy. And remember, you take you everywhere you go. So if your world is projecting to you things that you don't like, consider that maybe you are responsible for the world you see. That being said, sit back in meditation each morning ask your child okay what is it that you need give that child the nurturing and attention and everything that he asks for it's usually something very simple and then once you have that child the needs are met put them in the back seat now you can go over the new beliefs whatever it is i'm i'm lovable i'm wanted i'm enough and then the world is, I am, the world is safe, the world is beautiful, the world is kind, the world is abundant. Whatever it is you wanna create, you put it in there and then you start to walk out and live and project the life that you love because you say so. Now I'm Kimberly Lou, and if this video helps you in any way, please press like and subscribe and remember, you don't have to do this alone. 
We're gonna work it out together.